U240 neutral switch and a wiring harness 10 millimeters. <coughs> A lot of times it's easier to get this neutral switch off. This little nut right here is seven eighths. Just loosen it a little bit. You don't have to take it all the way off. millimeters on the speed sensors. I usually just mark one of them. They are both the same on this one. on the back cover. Two 10 millimeters down here on the front. <laughs> 10 millimeter on the <laughs> plug for the where the speed uh, speedometer would go on certain models. All right, go ahead and take our round box off. I keep them separate. Oh! 
think I took the wrong two out. Should have been these two, not these two. Eight millimeter on this temp sensor over here. <coughs> and this little bracket that holds it. Got two little seals here. tube that has a seal on it. Right there. We'll go ahead and take our harness out. Cooler check valve with a little spring behind it. I leave that separate. Our accumulators. Make sure you keep the springs with the accumulators because they are all different. You know which direction they go. Get your ring lands here real close. Make sure they're not worn out. 10 millimeter right here with this bracket. You want to check both of these tubes for cracks in them. Just uh, hold your Finger over one end, blowing the other. Make sure there's no cracks in here. Bearing back here. Check, make sure you're not ring grooves right there. Our hub bearing on that side and on this side. washer down here I wonder if we're catching all this this thing don't want to bend hopefully we're getting it all
we got uh, burnt clutches here uh, a lot of times this is a fairly good indication you may have a computer problem not always uh, the thing that you want to watch out for is once you get this thing rebuilt and you get it in the vehicle if it shift when it shifts to third gear if you feel a little bind up you know, immediately put it in low gear and come back um, odds are you got a bad computer and you can burn the transmission up on the test drive just going around the block now usually uh, this is your sun uh, Usually these uh, gear trains are either in good shape or they're just blown to pieces. Here's our Sprague assembly. And we'll make sure it turns counterclockwise, locks clockwise. Check our teeth here on the shell. Got our next planetary. We got a washer and a bearing. I'm going to keep this together right now. Or another washer. Sun gear. Another bearing. And there's another washer up in here. got our snap ring here the opening it's normally right over in this area this one's right up here at 12 o'clock and we got another snap ring this openings over here at the nine o'clock help with the scrub. Get a scrub with a 90 degree on it. Get behind your snap ring and pry it out if you don't want to come. And our center support should come out. You're going to have to try to bring it out as evenly as possible. And if these planetaries are blown up, it, it can be kind of difficult getting this thing out of there. It's kind of difficult even with it not in bad shape. Because it, it wants to get stuck when it gets cocked. And you got these little raised areas, you're going to have to push it down to get that snap ring around it. Started, it's really easy to get it off there. Got our return spring and our piston. Turn 
next set of clutches. take the front half apart before we can get our piston out the back. Usually this bearing goes right over here on the secondary shaft it is stuck to the case so you got this bearing in this race. Differential, make sure your pinions are okay. Bearings, your ring gear, usually they're not bad. 12 millimeters on the pump. Here's a 10 millimeter down here on this. Since I got the 10 on, I'll go ahead and take that out. This pin, this bracket slides up. You don't have to take this other pin and the part mechanism out as long as you're not up in the park position. This will fall back far enough to get it all out. Make sure if we're back far enough. Alright. 12 millimeters on the pump, like I said. Back here, 30 torques. Make sure the surface is good right here. You got two dots here, they face up. This one should have a dot on the bottom. It faces down. You can't remember that. You might want to go ahead and mark the gears so that there's no guessing. Make sure this surface here is in good shape. This pocket right here is not worn out. Usually if it is, you'll see the scoring on your gear on the outside right here. Drum hub. Those are fried. beat these off of there. Probably going to have to end up buying a hub. Uh, this is a bearing. So get that clutch off of there. 
scoring but it should be okay the bushings look okay and the rest of these I'm going to end up putting pistons in this one yeah, this bearing goes on the front of that drum here's our bearing and race for back here Now we can pull this transfer gear up. Should be back far enough. And it's out the way. seen it once you don't have to take all this apart there's no need to but just make sure and roll this around and make sure it, it feels nice and free that there's no chips in any of your sun gears down there or your pinion gears and as long as everything checks out like that you can just leave this all together no need to take it apart. And another drum down here, bearing in the back, and a race. There's a snap ring down here, the opening. The opening goes right here. There's an anti rattle clip right here. You make sure not lose it. We'll go ahead and mark our sprag. On top. So we definitely know that goes up. And you have a hard time getting it in the other way, but you don't want to screw this up. Another snap ring down here and another set of clutches. thing it might be cheaper to just buy them that way once you get to a certain point you're buying too many steels it's just better to buy the module it's not going to be that much more and you can replace them all now there's a snapper and spring cage down here I just get a screwdriver on it and push it off work it off all the way around. Get your pair of snap ring pliers. And now you can get that out. Turn spring and let's get our piston out. a little 
tab bent over right there, locking tab, and bend that back out. I don't have a socket for it, so we're just going to knock it off with a screwdriver. Our locking ring has got a locating tab that goes in that little slot right there. Now we're just going to get a bushing driver and drive the planet out. Be careful and not mushroom this out so much that you can't get the nut back on it. And I'm going to have to get a little bit smaller. times when you're knocking that out the little pins that hold that planetary together are so fragile it'll break them little pins in here to hold these pinions in and what you want to do at this point you want to check your pinions make sure they're not wobbling that your washers are in there it's not got too much play back and forth if everything looks okay in here we're gonna go in here and we're gonna weld these pins and then we're gonna grind the weld down to make sure it doesn't interfere but what we're gonna do the reason I kept all this out is we're gonna assemble this all back in there and the reason you want to do this is it'll line everything up So you want to put everything together now everything's together everything's lined up we're going to go back here and we're going to weld this after I clean this all up we're going to go in here and we're going to weld the pins up on the back that's going to have everything lined up and then once that happens we can go in and we can do the front ones you can even weld these up out here if you want to this is not normally where it messes up it's on this back planet right here so what make sure and, and weld these and if you have to replace these make sure that the ones you get is welded if it's not go ahead and weld it up right, now we can do the piston here I just do the same thing I did on the back I just get a screwdriver get on the snap ring and push it off there we go. spring cage and put them in the wrong spot and we can pull our piston out Sure, the bearing down there feels nice and good. Make sure that your gear is okay and not got any chips in it. Should be good there. And go take these drums apart. in the return spring. Oop. 
Got to take my clutches out. I'm gonna have to get some different mounts for these cameras or the camera. I want to eventually get some more cameras so I can get some other views. Snap ring. Come on. Let go. There we go. And there's our pistons for that one. Alright, here's our snap ring. And you have to be really careful with this piston right here. A lot of times you're not going to get this piston in the kit. Uh, sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. I would say most of the time it doesn't. And you'll get a little note in there that says it's unavailable. I don't know why sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. But uh, if this piston is bad, you probably want to go and get a drum that's got it all in there. Because you're probably not going to get it when you order your piston kit. Alrighty. Um, the valve body is probably going to be wore out on this thing. I'm going to wait until we get this thing sold. Um, we'll go through on the valve body I'll show you where the the most worn places are and uh, we might even I don't know if we'll do it or not but we might even put it on the vacuum tester the Sonex vacuum tester and see if we can isolate some worn out bores show that to you uh, at this point, let me go write this one up, see if we can get it so Alright, this is what we're going to do. Master kit with steels and pistons. A filter, a pump bushing, and a zip kit from Sonax. And of course, a torque converter. May end up needing some extra valves for the valve body. Uh, we won't know that until we get in there. But, uh, no point opening that valve body up until we make sure they even want to spend the money to re rebuild this, but they should. Yeah. We'll see what we got 